Hello, in this lesson, we are going to talk about logarithmic functions and, of, and their graphs and properties. Logarithmic functions and the graphs and properties. Uh, many of the slides that were for the PowerPoint, which I'm using for the base of this video, were, uh, were produced by Professor Sean Hader from Salt Lake Community College. So I want to give her credit for that. Let's get started. Logarithmic functions and their graphs. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what a logarithmic function is. A logarithmic function is actually the inverse of an exponential function with the same base. So the logarithmic function, the logarithmic function, y equal to log base b of x, is actually the inverse of an exponential function with the same base. And the input of the logarithmic function was the output of the exponential function. And the output output of the logarithmic function is the input of the exponential function. So when we're thinking about a logarithmic function, we must think about a corresponding exponential function with the, cor uh, with the same base. So if y equal to log base b of x, that's the logarithmic form, then that matches up with the exponential form, same base b raised to the power y equal to x. In other words, the logarithm base b of x is what exponent do I raise the base b to to get x? In other words, logarithms are exponents. The logarithm is the exponent to which I raise the base b to get the output x. So a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential function with the same base. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. So let's say we have y equal to log a base a of x. That is the case if and only if x is equal to a to the y. So the bases are the same. The input of one is the output of the other, and the output of one is the input of the other. So we have the logarithmic form, and we have the exponential form. The logarithmic form typically has the word log with a base indicated there are a couple of variations which we'll talk about in the video. The exponential form, of course, is the base raised to an exponent. So here's an example. Let's say we have 16 equal to 4 squared. Of course, we know that this is a true statement. 16 is equal to 4 squared. If we're going to convert this to logarithmic form, what we want to do first is identify the base that we're in. In this case, since it's an exponential form, the base is 4, the output is 16, and the input is 2. So the, the corresponding logarithmic form will be log base 4, same base, of 16 is equal to 2. The output becomes the input, and the input becomes the output. So the same base, output of the, of the exponential is the input of the, in, of the logarithm, and the input of the exponential is the output of the logarithm. And as you can see, log base 4 of 16 is 2 because log base 4 16 is asking to what power to what exponent do i raise the number the number 4 to get an answer of 16 and that number is 2 so the log base 4 of 16 is the exponent here's another one log base 2 of 1 8 is equal to negative 3 log base 2 of 1 8 equal to negative 3 would mean that if you raise 2 to a certain to the power negative 3 you get 1 8 so the base again the base again is the same and then the output of one is the input of the other and the input of one is the output of the other and there we have it so when you convert an exponential to a logarithmic form notice that the exponent in the exponential form becomes the logarithm that is equal to that brings us to um, a, a, a few examples here which we'll do and then we're going to make a statement that i just made more clearly because this is key to understanding logarithms and uh, properly and that key is that logarithms are exponents but let's do a few quick examples here and I, since we just did two examples in conversion I would encourage you to try some of these on your own before you see how I did them now this question is write each equation in uh, yeah, in its equivalent exponential form so we're given the logarithmic form of the equation. We want to find the exponential form. So I'm going to write the if and the if and only if log um, uh, form, which says it works both directions. So first, since we're doing exponential, we look for the base. The base is two. 
the output becomes the input and the input becomes the output it is that easy and as you can see this is true 2 to the power of 4 is 16 let's try this one again this is the if and only if sign the base is 2 output is 6 for the logarithm so that's the input of the exponential and the input is 64 so that's the output very simple let's try one with a variable if and only if first we look for the base the base is 3 that's written at the base of the log the exponent is now going to be 2. The output becomes the input, and the input becomes the output. Another example of similar type, the base is 9. Output is 2. Input is x. Another example here. In this case, the base is b. And output is um, of, of, of the logarithmic form is 5 so that's the input that's the exponent and the input is 32 and then log base b of 27 base is b output becomes 3 um it was 3 so that becomes the input and input becomes output very simple last two examples for this part base is 6 output is y that becomes the exponent input is 216 that becomes the output and then in this case base is 5 output is y input is 125 so we switch outputs and inputs and keep the base it works the same way going the other direction it's just that the output and inputs are written in a different way so in this case we're writing in logarithmic form so what we're going to do is this is the same as log base and then we look for the base. The base of the exponential form is 2, so that's log base 2. Output is 8, so that's now the input of the logarithm, and that's equal to 3. Log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. In this case, we can say log base 5 of 625 is equal to 4. And if you notice how I'm saying this, I say base, so I don't say log 5, I say log base 5. In this example, I would say log base 2, so I identify what is the base of, of the input is the output, negative 4. Log base 2 of 1 over 16 is negative 4 or is equal to negative 4. Very important that you say that. Don't just say log 2 or log 5 or log 8. This one is a little trickier because this is not written in logarithmic, in, in an exponential form. What we want to do is rewrite number 13. So I'm just going to do a little scribble down here for us to see what's going on. It's quick, cube root of 8 is actually 8 raised to the power of 1 third, if you recall from exponent rules. And exponent rules are a big deal when it comes down to logarithm. So the base is actually 8 and the exponent is actually 1 third, which we get from rewriting the, expo the radical as an exponential. So then the rewritten version in log in the form is log and again we say log base and we say what the base is so log base 8 off off 2 output becomes input is equal to the what was the exponent is now the output one third similarly you can see then that the base here would be 64 so we say log base 64 off 4 is and q root is the same as one third exponent moving on here with these other simple examples now we do log base 13 of x is equal to 2 and that would in this case we'll have log base b of 1000 is equal to 3 log base b of 343 is equal to 3. And so you get the idea. It's very simple. First, we identify the base. In this case, base is 7, log base 7. Output becomes input 200. Of log base 7 of 200 equals to input becomes output equals to y. And we move on. 
So as you can see then, that logarithms are exponents. Logarithms are exponents. And uh, because logarithms are exponents, we sh should be able to read them properly. We're actually saying in this case, when we say log base 2 of 16, we're asking 2 raised to what exponent gives 16? 2 raised to what exponent gives 16? And that answer, of course, is 4. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So log base 2 of 16 is 4. In the similar reasoning, log base 3 of 1 9th would be asking 3 raised to what power gives you 1 over 9. Now, 3 squared is 9. So 1 over 9 would be a negative exponent. So we'd say that would be 3 to the negative 2 would be 1 9th. So log base 3 of 1 9th is negative 2. So log base 4 of 1 is what? Well, if we raise any number, any non zero number to the power of 1, um, to the power of 0, we get 1. So 4 to what power gives you 1? 4 to the 0. So log base 4 of log base 4 of 1 is equal to 0. And in fact, log of with any base, log with respect to any base of 1 will give you 0. Just a side, side note here, since logarithms are inverses of exponential functions, then logarithm, the basis of logarithms follow the same rules. The basis must be positive numbers other than 1. Logarithms cannot have negative bases, the base cannot be 0, and the base cannot be 1. The base has to be a positive real number other than 1. In this case, log base 3 of, Q, uh, of the square root of 3, you're asking 3 to what power gives you square root of 3? Well, if you recall, square root of 3 is actually 3 raised to the power 1, uh, one half. So three, log base 3 of square root of 3 is log base 3 of 3 to the half. And we're asking 3 to what power gives you 3 to the half? Well, that's almost circular. It's saying 3 to the half gives you 3 to the half. So the result is half. 3 to what power gives you 3 to the half? Half. And so we have a few quick examples here that illustrate the point. Again, I just wanted you can pause the video and you can see the reasoning behind these questions. Now let's take a quick example, a set of examples here. I won't do all of these examples, uh, but these are illustrative of the point that logarithms are exponents. So when we say log base 4 of 16, we're asking 4 to what power gives you 16? 4 times 4 is 16, so 4 to the power 2 is 16. 2 to what power gives you 64? If you multiply 2 by itself, 5 times you get 32. 2 times it, another 2 gives you 64, so 2 to the power 6 gives you 64. 5 raised to the 1 fifth, 5 to, raised to a what power gives you 1 fifth? Well, 5 raised to the negative 1 is 1 over 5, so log base 5 of 1 fifth is negative 1. And uh, 2 raised to the power 3 is 8, so 2 raised to the power negative 3 is 1 eighth. So if you have a negative exponent, then you take the reciprocal. As you, can, as you can see here, just, this is similar to the one we just did. 7 raised to what power gives you square root 7? A square root is an exponent of half. And uh, in that case, if you're flipping it, if it's 1 over that number, then it's really a negative exponent. So in this case, log base 2 of 1 over square root 2 is negative 1 half. Now, 64 raised to what power gives you 8? Well, 8 is the square root of 64, and a square root is a power of half. So in likewise, log base 81 of 9 is 1 half because 81 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 81, which is 9. Log base 5 of 5 is 1 because any number raised to the power 1 is itself. And that's a general rule. If the base and the input are exactly the same, the output of that logarithm is 1. We just saw that log base 4 of 1 is 0. In fact, log base anything, uh, any legal base of 1 is 0. This one looks a little weird, but let's reason through what we're saying. We're saying we raise 5 to a certain power, and the answer is 5 to the 7. What's the exponent? That exponent is 7. In a sense, we're canceling this base with this base, leaving just the input because of inverse function properties. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But in, in what we're saying is, to what power, this log is asking, to what power do I raise the number 5 to get 5 to the 7. To what power, to what exponent do I raise the number 5 to get 5 to the 7? That exponent has to be 7. To what exponent do I raise 4 to get 4 to the 6? That exponent is 6. 
The next thing one here is saying, I raise 8 to a certain power and I get 19. So when I raise 8 to that power, what is the answer? 19. It's working the other way around. So I say if I find out what exponent I raise 8 to to get 19, then when I raise 8 to that exponent, the answer is 19. Another way of thinking of it is they are inverse of the operation, so they undo each other. So this base and this base are the same base, so they undo each other's effect, and that leaves just the input. That's the inverse property of logarithms. So log base 7 raised to the log base 7 of 23, of course, would then be 23, because we're asking 7 raised to a certain power gives us 23. What is the result when we raise 7 to that power? So let's say 7 raised to the power b is 23. Then this number here is b. So 7 to the b is 23. All right, let's move on with a couple of inform bits of information here that drives on the point. Remember that logarithms are and exponentials are inverse functions, so they undo each other. The input of one is the output of the other, and the output of one is the input of the other, but the bases must be the same. Which brings us uh, to the special logarithm base E. Log base E is a special logarithm, and in fact, its definition is defined in calculus, and then it exhibits all the properties of logarithms that we will discuss. We will not be defining log base E, but we will be describing it. And log base E is called the natural logarithm, the natural logarithm. And E is a number that's approximately equal to 2.718 to 818. This is a slight error here. Um, the, so when you do log base E of this number, the answer is approximately 1. Now, the natural log is not written the normal way. We don't say log base E. You will not see that on a calculator. You will see LN. This looks like IN, but it's lowercase l. LN. Some calculator has a capital LN to make it clear. Log base is, is from the Latin logarithm natural, which is natural logarithm. And so the natural logarithm of E is 1. So when you're looking for trying to do the natural logarithm at a calculator, you use the LN button, the LN button, and then you do your input. So LN of X really means log base E of X. LN of X means it's log base E. So whenever you see LN, think log base E. And remember, a logarithm has to have an input. The input of a logarithm is called the argument of the logarithm. So another logarithm is the common log, which is base 10. It's so common that it's, it's like a square root. We do not write the index of a square root. When we see a radical without an index, we know it's a, the radical is an index of 2. It's a square root. When you see log without a base, the base is understood to be base 10. So log base 10 is written as log without a base indicated. That means log base 10. So log of 100 is 10, log base 10 of 100, which in this case, of course, will have to be 2. And then uh, log of 1 over 1,000 is really asking 10 to what power gives you 1 over 1,000, which would be negative 3. So we same idea as we proceed. And the common log is very useful. That's what is used to measure earthquake strength on the Richter scale. And what we're seeing is if we have an earthquake of strength, of uh, 4 on the Richter scale and another earthquake of strength 5 on the Richter scale. The earthquake of strength 5 is 10 times as powerful as uh, uh, as the earthquake of, of, of uh, scale 4. So that's a whole different um, magnitude, uh, uh, 10 times the size. Every time you go up one level, you're going up by a factor of 10. So let's take a quick look at the comparisons of the properties of logarithms as they relate to exponential functions. Now, please remember here that logarithms and exponential functions are inverses of each other, which means what applies to the y values for one applies to the x values for the other, and what applies to the x values for one applies to the y values for the other. So let's start off with talking about the situation we see here. The domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. The domain are the x values that you can plug into the function. Whatever real number you plug into the exponential, your output, 
you'll have an output. So since the domain of the exponential is all real numbers, then that corresponds to the range of the logarithmic function. So the range of a logarithmic function is all real numbers. The domain of an exponential function are positive real numbers greater than zero. That would mean that that would be the domain of, an, of a logarithmic function. So you see that logarithmic functions have a domain restriction. Their only inputs can be positive numbers. The inputs of a logarithmic function have to be greater than zero. Can't be zero, can't be negative. Um, as you can see that an exponential function has no, no x-intercept, so that means logarithmic functions have no y-intercepts. Whatever applies to the x for one applies to the y for the other one. The y-intercept for the exponential function is 0, 1. So the x-intercept for, for the logarithmic function is 1, 0. You are switching the x's and the y's. You're interchanging y and x, trading places. Both graphs in, are increasing. The graph of the exponential increases rapidly upward. We call it concave up. The uh, graph of the logarithm con uh, is concave down, but that's not particularly obvious in this situation. And then the back to the flip-flop, the x-axis is, uh, is the horizontal asymptote for the exponential function. So the y-axis is the vertical asymptote for the logarithmic function. So we see here that if you understand the properties of one, you can tell the properties of the other one. And there are a few other limitations here, certain things you need to know. For example, what if the base is bigger than one? What if the base is smaller than one? The properties we just went through here are for bases bigger than one. But for bases smaller than one, we have a situation um, that, that I will explain in a minute. So this is the graph of the exponential, and this is the graph of the logarithm. If you draw them on the same graph, you will see that one is the reflection of the other one about the line y equal x. So if you draw one graph, then you can draw the other graph as a reflection of, of, the, of the one by uh, across the line y equal x. And basically all that is is you're just switching x in, uh, values and y values. Now here's what we have here. In, on the graph on the left, if the base is bigger than 1, the exponential function represents the blue graph. It's increasing um, upward, concave up, kind of like opening upward. And the logarithmic graph is... Uh, the red graph increasing upward but concave down, opening downward. But you can see that there are mirror images across the line y equal x. If the base is smaller than 1, the exponential function is decreasing and the logarithmic graph is increasing. And you can see that there are mirror images of each, oh, both are decreasing, sorry. There are mirror images of each other across the line y equal to um, x. So you can see where the, where the blue graph is the exponential function, the red graph is the logarithmic function, the, the asymptotes are still matching up, horizontal asymptote for the exponential, vertical asymptote for the, uh, for the uh, logarithmic. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do some, do a little example here of finding the We're going to find the domain of the logarithmic functions here. So we have f of x is equal to ln of x squared minus 4x minus 12. Now, since we're doing domain of a logarithmic function, we recall that the domain of a logarithmic function uh, satisfies the domain restriction. The input of a logarithmic function has to be non, uh, has to be positive. The input has to be greater than zero. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the input greater than zero, and we're going to solve. So remember now, input has to be positive, greater than zero. So that means x squared minus 4x minus 12 is greater than zero. That's a polynomial inequality. And in a polynomial inequality, what you want to do is solve the corresponding equation for the uh, what I call the markers. The markers will tell us where the graph will uh, be, it will cross or touch the x-axis. So since it's a quadratic uh, that is factorable, I see that two numbers that multiply to be negative 12 and add to be negative 4 would be 
negative 6 and positive 2. So I'm going to solve that equation and uh, that will tell me my markers. So that would be my markers then will then be x equal to negative 2 and x equal to 6. If I plug in negative 2, I will get 0. And if I plug in positive 6, I will get 0. So then what I'm going to do is, since this is strictly greater than, my markers will only be indicated by parentheses. In other words, those are open intervals. Let us do a little sketch of a number line, and we're going to do a test of a few values to see which values are going to be uh, give us what we want. So my markers here are negative 2, which I'll mark with negative 2 here, and 6. And what I will do is choose numbers between uh, to the left of negative 2, between negative 2 and 6, and to the right of uh, 6. So I'm going to just indicate those numbers in green here. So let's try x equal to, say, negative 3. That's a number to the left. If I try negative 3, I get negative 3 plus 2 times negative 3 minus 6. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So that gives me positive 9. So when I try a number to the left of 2, I get a positive answer. This negative 3 is only representative of a number in this region. So any number in the region to the left of negative 2 will give me a positive result. That's all I wanted to know. For this region here, of course, if I try 0, which is the most the easiest one to work with, my answer is going to be negative 12. So I have uh, 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 6, and that will give me negative 12. So numbers in between negative 2 and 6 will give me negative results. And then for this one, in this region here, to the left, to the right of uh, 6, I can try, say, 7. When I try 7, I will have uh, zero, uh, 7 plus 2 and uh, multiply by 7 minus 6. And those are both going to be positive numbers. 7 plus 2 is 9 and 7 minus 6 is 1. So we get a positive answer. And now we look at this and we say, okay, this inequality says we only want the regions that give us positive answers greater than 0. So I want the region to the left of negative 2 and to the right of 6. And the boundaries are parentheses because we're not allowed to ha input zeros into the logarithms. So based on that, um, note, uh, that explanation, that uh, process there, we get that the domain of this function is negative infinity up to negative 2 parentheses union 6 to infinity. Those are the numbers you can plug in. You can plug numbers into the left of negative 2 or to the right of 6, but you cannot plug in numbers in between because then you won't get an answer. And you cannot plug in those two numbers either because you won't get an answer as well. Let's try this next question here. Same as before, the input has to be greater than 0. can't be simply greater than or equal to. It has to be greater than 0. So our markers, our markers are pretty easy to identify here since the markers are both linear in the numerator and the denominator. So for the numerator, the marker is x minus 2 equal to 0 implies that the marker is x equal to 2. And we're going to be using parentheses for both markers because it's a strict greater than or equal to, greater than, sorry, strictly greater than. And then the denominator marker corresponds to, from x plus 5 equal to 0, and that would be x is equal to negative 5. And again, that marker will have parentheses again. So what we're going to do now is, as before, we're going to draw our number line, and we're going to try numbers in that expression to see what gives us positive results, because again, we want only positive inputs for the logarithm. Negative 5 is to the left of 2, so I'm going to put negative 5 on the left and a 2 on the right. And then we're going to try some numbers. So a number to the left of negative 5, we can try negative 6. So let's try, for example, x equal to negative 6. Any number to the left of negative 5 would work. When I try negative 6, I have negative 6 minus 2 over negative 6 plus 5. That's going to give me a positive 8. 
positive 8 because it's a negative 8 divided by negative 1. So to the left of negative 5, it just happens to be positive. And now in between, we can try 0. So x equal to 0. We can try that. And that's for this region here. We can try any number between negative 5 and 2. We try 0. We see 0 minus 2 is negative, And 0 plus 5 is positive. We end up with a negative 2 fifths. Negative 2 fifths means the in-between is a negative, negative result here. And then we try a number to the right of 2, say 3. So we try a number to the right of 2, such as 3. And we have 3 minus 2 is positive 1. And 3 plus 5 is positive 8. So we have 1 eighth, which is a positive number, which is all I really care about, whether it's a positive or a negative. And then since we only want positive results, we're going to take the numbers to the left of negative 5 to the right of 2, and we'll, sh we'll use parentheses to for the boundaries. Parentheses open up in the direction that we shade. So the domain, the domain of this function is negative infinity to negative 5 union, five, uh, uh, union uh, 2 to infinity. And there we have it with um, the domain of logarithmic functions. Now we're going to talk about transformations of logarithmic functions. So as you can see from this little chart here, which I took from the book Pre-Calculus 5th edition by Blitzer, section 3.2, transformations of logarithmic functions follow the general transformations of functions. If you add to the x's, you shift if you uh, add to the y's, you shift up, down. Add to the x's, you shift horizontally, left, right. Uh, you multiply the x's, you replace the x's with a negative x, then you reflect across the y-axis. If you re put a negative in front of the whole function, you reflect, reflect across the uh, x-axis. And of course, it stretches if you multiply by a constant, a non-zero constant. And of course, remember the, the general rules of uh, transformations about uh, if you add a positive number, if you add a positive number to the x's, then you're shifting to the left. If you subtract a positive number from the x's, you're shifting to the right. But when you do that to the log to the y's, they do what, as you expect. Those are intuitive transformations. So let's take a quick look at a few examples here. We have y f of x equal to log base 10 of x. What if we wanted to graph f of x equal to 2 plus log base 10 of x? As you can see, we are not adding the 2 to the x's, we're adding the 2 to the whole expression. So we're just going to shift the graph upward 2 units. And when you shift a graph, the, the asymptote gets shifted. The asymptote here is the y-axis, so it gets shifted upward. But a vertical line shifted upward is the same vertical line. So you still have the same, uh, you have the same asymptote. Now, log base 10 of x plus 1, in this case, we're, we're adjusting the x's by adding a number to it, so we're shifting the graph to the left one unit. So the graph gets shifted to the left. The vertical asymptote gets shifted to the left as well. So the new vertical asymptote is now the line x equal to negative 1. And if I put a negative in front of the logarithm, basically I'm re reflecting it across the x-axis, and that will give us this looking graph here. So negative log base 10 of x is exactly the same as log base 1 tenth of x. And here are a few quick examples uh, to give an illustration of what's going on here. Uh, log base 3, uh, log 3 plus log base 4 of x is shifting the graph up. The blue graph is log base 4 of x. And the red graph is a transformation. If you do log base 2 of x and you do a negative in front of that, you just reflect, reflect it across the... the uh, uh, x-axis, and if you replace all the x's with negative x, then you're reflecting it across the y-axis. So let's do a quick example here. I recommend that you try these on your own and then see if you can identify what graph corresponds to what. And then you can check and see what I'm doing here. So what are, one of the things we want to do first here is we want to identify the original graph, the graph of the original function. So let's see if we can identify the graph of the original function. We have log base 3 of x. So this graph 
should have the y-axis as a vertical asymptote. It should cross to the point uh, 1, 0, and um, it should be rising. So let's see which graph does that. There we go, number 52. That is my basic graph. So that graph, of course, is lowercase f of x equal to log base 3 of x. As you can see here, the asymptote here is the y-axis. So the asymptote is the y-axis. And of course, the graph is increasing. The graph is increasing. And the x-intercept, the x-intercept is the point 1, 0. So just to illustrate what we're dealing with here, that's our graph that we're going to use as a comparison for everything else. In this case here, you see that what we did was basically flip the graph upside down. So we did a reflection about the we did a reflection about the x-axis, so reflect vertically, reflect over the x-axis. And then it looks like we did something else here, because if we just reflected it over the x-axis only, the intercept would have been the same, but now the intercept is at um, uh, 3, which means they shifted the graph up more. They, they didn't shift it to the right because the vertical asymptote is still the same. So what we did was we pushed the graph up and where it would normally be crossing at 1. Now it's crossing, it, that, that point got pushed up to the point one, one. So it seems that they shifted the graph up one unit. So we shift up one unit. So what we have then is we have a reflection over the x-axis, that means a negative in front of the logarithm, and a vertical shift, that means you add one to that, and that looks like capital H of x. So I'm going to write it above the graph here. H of x is equal to negative log base 3 of x, then add 1 to that. So it's 1 minus log base 3 of x. For this graph, it's pretty straightforward here. All we did was we reflected the graph about the, the uh, y-axis. That's a vertical ref uh, reflection, a horizontal reflection which means we just replaced all our x's with negative x, and that is capital G of x, which is log base 3 of negative x. And that's just a reflection over the y-axis. In this graph here, it seems that they shifted the graph downward one unit. So it's a downward shift by one unit, I'm writing as a negative one to indicate a downward shift. So that graph would be subtracting one from the whole thing, that's lowercase h of x. So we have h of x is equal to log base three of x and then minus one. Please know that we don't use any parentheses here. It's a very important thing to use parentheses when you're doing these logarithms, such as lowercase g of x. It's x minus 1 in parentheses, indicating that it's the whole argument, the whole input of the logarithm is x minus 1. And now in this case, we see that we reflected it over the reflected it over the, the x-axis, and that's it. So we only have a reflection over the x-axis. The intercept is, is basically the same. The asymptote is the same. So what we're talking about here is the graph of uppercase f of x. All we did was a vertical reflection. So we can just say this is capital F of x 
is equal to negative log base 3 of x. And then, of course, in this case, we shifted the graph to the right one unit. So this graph got shifted to the right one unit. So we're talking about the graph. Let's see what is left. Lowercase g of x. Lowercase g of x equal to log base 3 of x minus 1. And there we have the transformations. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to transition into the properties of logarithms. The properties of logarithms. Now, remember here that logarithms and exponentials undo each other. So the input of one is the output of the other and vice versa. It also means that if you do a composition of one function with the other, they undo each other because inverse functions are inverse operations. What one does, the other undoes. What a function does is inverse undoes that. So if you do f of f inverse of x, you get x, and f inverse of f of x is also x. What that means is, if you do, if f of x here, if f of x here is a to the x, and f inverse of x is log base a of x, same base. By the way, this x and this x are not the same. The x in one function is actually the y in the other function. So the input of one is actually the output of the other. So when we do log base a of x, this x was actually the y value for this function here. So when I do f of f inverse of x, I'm doing a to the a log base a of x. What we're really doing is undoing what f, what f inverse did. f inverse did this, f takes it back to the original. And likewise, if I do f inverse of f of x, log base a of a of x is telling me that whatever one function did, the other undoes it. So if I do 2 to the log base 2 of 5, basically I'm undoing what log base 2 did to 5. Log base 2 took a number, took 5 to a certain spot, and 2 took it back to 5. So they undo each other. They basically cancel each other out, leaving just a 5. And likewise, log base 3 of 3 to the 7, the bases are the same, they cancel each other out, we get 7. So we have a few nice properties here of logarithms. If the base, the log base b of b is 1, so we're asking b to the power 1 is b. b to what power gives you b? b to the 1. So log base b of b is 1. And then log base b of 1 is 0. Whatever the base is, if the input is 1, the output is 0. Likewise, we just saw that the inverse property, log base b of b to the x is x and b to the log base b of x is x. This applies to the common logarithms as well. So when we say log base b of 1 is equal to 0, then that we're saying log of 1 is 0. And if we're doing natural log, we say ln of 1 is 0, because natural log is just log base e. The base of log natural log is 10, but we don't write it. So when we say log 10, we mean log base 10 of 10. So log 10 is 1. The base of natural log is e, so ln of e is log base e of e. So whenever you see ln e, you mean 1. Log base b of b to the x is x. So log base 10 of 10 to the x, or just log, log of 10 to the x is just x, which means ln of e to the x is x because the ln undoes the e. And likewise, vice versa, if we do 10 to the log x is just x, or e to the ln x is x. The ln undoes, the e undoes the ln, just canceling each other out. So let us try a few examples here. Let's see what we got. So log 100, of course, is uh, 2. Log 1,000 is 3 because 10 to the 3 is 1,000. And log base 10 of 10 to the 7, they will undo each other, just leaving just a 7. That's because the base, the unwritten base, the unwritten base here, which I'll just write in a little 
um, faint color here is base 10. Um, so that means log the the log base 10 will cancel the base 10 so that leaves us with 33 here and then ln of 1 is 0 because log of any log within a base of 1 is 0 ln of e is 1 and of course ln undoes e so that result here is 6 because ln undoes e in this case we have to understand that what we're really saying here is ln of e to the negative 6 so when you do that that will undo the ln just leaving negative 6 as your result and of course e undoes ln so those will cancel each other leaving just the 125 if we go over here again ln undoes e and that just leaves that 9x i'm assuming here yes that's a correct assumption that 9x is in the whole exponent that's not an assumption that's pretty clear and then in this case i'm assuming that the the one fit the 5x squared is actually the input of the logarithm not just the 5. so we have to make sure we're clear about what we're doing with these that their inputs the whole thing is an input so when we do that the e undoes the ln just leaving the 5x squared as the result and of course log base 10 is written as without a base so this is still cancelling right here and that just leaves us with the square root of x i leave it to try the others on your own they're pretty straightforward now these questions here i like to think about a bit they're saying evaluate these expressions without using a calculator and of course the rules are do do parentheses before you do exponents of uh, uh, well before you do multiplication but in this case we're doing a composition so we're just going in one step at a time so the first thing is we work out inside log base 7 of 7 since the bases are the same that log works out to be 1 so we end up with log base 3 of 1 okay, but log of 1 is always 0 so that's 0 very easy if you try this one here let's see what happens with that this here is log base 2 of 32 in other words asking 2 to what power gives you 32 that is 5 and now we're asking log base 5 of 5 and that gives you 1 let us write this down here so there's no confusion of the notes we're saying that this thing is that now with this one here we do log base 3 of 81 we're asking 3 to what power gives you 81 so we know that 3 times itself 4 times gives you 81 so log base 3 of 81 is 4 and then log base 2 of 4 is asking 2 to what power gives you 4 and that answer is 2 and then ln of e we know to be 1 so we're talking about log base 10 of 1 but log of 1 is always 0 so very simple process now let's dig, dig in a little deeper about other properties of logarithms and these properties of logarithms are based on properties of exponents remember logarithms are inverse inverses of expo of exponents so remember if you multiply two numbers with the same base you're going to add the exponent so log base a of m times n is log base a of m plus log base a of n remember logarithms are exponents so we're saying if we multiply the two numbers with the same base you're going to add the exponents and logarithms are exponents so the log of a product is the sum of the logs with the same base likewise if you divide two numbers with the same base you do the log the top exponent minus the bottom exponent you keep the same base so the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs and if you raise a number to a power you multiply that power to the exponent and remember the logarithm is the exponent so that means the input if the input of, a, of the argument the input of the 
the input of the logarithms or the argument is raised to a power, that exponent can actually become the the uh, the uh, coefficient of the whole logarithm. That is a particularly useful property. And as I said, these properties are based on exponents. So I'm restating those properties right here, going in the two directions, is equals. Equals is symmetric. That means it works both directions. You can use it to expand the logarithm, or you can use it to contract the logarithm. That's going the other way. Please be careful that you don't confuse these rules. So there's no rule for a log of a sum or a log of a difference. The rule is for a log of a product. And when you do the log of a product, it converts to a sum. When you do a log of a quotient, it converts to a subtraction. These are common errors that people make that you must be very careful about. Do not make these errors. This one in particular is insidious. If you have two things multiplied and one of them has an exponent, the exponent is only for the one it's above, not for both of them. So this is where this, this error would occur because this P is not for the whole log. It will only be for one of them. So be particularly careful of this. So let's do a few examples here. And there are a couple of these steps that we can do, we can combine. So we have log base 6 of the quantity a, b to the 4 over the cube root of c squared. Whenever you have radicals and you're working with logarithms, you want to change those to exponent, exponential form. So the cube root of c squared will change that to c to the 2 thirds. Then we, approach, we start using the properties of logarithms. Everything here is multiplied or divided, so we can now split it up. We know use the, the quotient properties since that's the most over, overarching property here. So the, we subtract log of the numerator minus log of the denominator. The numerator has a product within, so we can then split that up into a sum of two things. So it's log base 6 of a plus log base 6 of b to the 4, and then the minus log base c of c, uh, 6 of c to the 2 thirds. As a shortcut here, you could actually put these two steps together. Whatever is multiplied in the numerator, those logs are positive. Whatever is in the denominator or multiplied in the denominator, those logs are going to be negative. There's a minus in front of those logs. Finally, we want to move the exponent of the inputs, the exponents of the argument, to the front of the logarithms. So we're going to move this 4 to the, to the coefficient of log base 6, and this 2 thirds to the coefficient of log base 6 of c. So we have that, and that is the expanded form of that logarithm. Let's do it the other way now. We're going to combine it so that the coefficient is 1, and it's 1 log log base Three. This can only be done if the bases start, are, are the same to begin with. If the bases are not the same, you have to do a little bit more work, more thinking. So what we're going to do is first make sure there's no number in front. I'm going to move this 2 to become the exponent of the x, and this half I'm going to move to the exponent of the y, but I'm going to keep the minus. So we end up with this, log base 3 of x squared minus log base 3 of y to the half. Now since this is a minus, and these logs are the same. We put log base 3, whichever log is positive, its argument goes to the numerator. Whichever log has a minus or a negative in front, its argument goes to the denominator. And we end up with log base 3 of x squared over y to the half. And you can probably write this y to the half as square root of y, if you so desire. So let's try a few examples here. So this question is simply uh, a series of examples that we're going to use. This says, use properties of logarithms to expand each logarithm expression, logarithm expression as much as possible. Where possible, evaluate the logarithmic expression without using a calculator. So in this case, let's do a little bit of uh, work here. We're going to need to do some computation. So we're expanding here. So we, we don't multiply the 13 by the 7. What we're going to do is just say, what does this expression expand to be? It's log base 8 of 13. And the 
log of a product is the sum of the logs. So log base 8 of 7. Are we done? It's that easy. In this case, we have log base 9 of 9 plus log base 9 of x. But of course, log base 9 of 9 is 1. So we can write this as 1 plus log base 9 of x. And that's that. With this one here, we're doing log of 10,000 plus log of x. Now, log without the base is base 10, so we can write that as log base 10. Log base 10 of 10,000 is just 4. It's cause 10 to the 4 is 10,000. So that's 4 plus log x. In this case, we do log base 9 of 9, and it's a quotient, so we subtract log base 9 of x which we can then rewrite as 1 minus log base 9 of x. Let me just move this slightly down so we have a little bit more space to work with here. In this case, we do log of x minus log of 1,000. And log of 1,000 we see to be 3, because 10 to the 3 is 1,000. And by the way, that's not log base x, that's log of x. So let me write that more clearly. Log base 10 of x. So just log of x. And then minus 3. That 3 is not inside the logarithm. I would have used parentheses otherwise. Now with this one here, we do similarly log base 5 of 125 minus log base 5 of y. And 5 to the 3 is 125, so that's log base 5 of 125 is 3 minus log base 5 of y. For number 14, we have ln of e to the 4 minus ln of 8. E, ln of e, 20 power, they undo each other, just leaving the power. So we end up with 4 minus ln 8. And we'll just leave it like that, even though we can write 8 as 2 cubed and do a little extra work, but let's not do, do that right now. This rule is the exponent rule. We can move the exponent to become the coefficient of the logarithm. So this one is simply negative 8 times log m. And that's that. In this case... We're going to have to rewrite the radical as an exponent. So 7th root of x is x to the 1 7th. And then the exponent of the input of a logarithm can become the coefficient of the logarithm. So it become 1 7th ln of x. For this next question here, you need to be very careful because if 3 only applies to the y. So we're going to write it as log base b of x plus log base b of y cubed. And then the, y, the cube, which is the exponent of the y, can now become the coefficient of that part, of that only that log. So this becomes log base b of x plus 3 log base b of y. And of course, I'm strongly encouraging you to try these on your own before you see the results from what I do so you can check your understanding. So let's go on with a few more difficult ones. Hopefully we'll have some space. So we have log base 5 of square root of x, which I'm going to write square root of x as x to the 1 half minus, since that's a quotient, log base 5 of 25. Well, we can move the x to the half to the front, so we get half log base 5 of x, and the log base 5 of 25 is 2, because 5 to the 2 is 25. 
and we continue so that one is done we have log log base 8 of 64 we're asking 8 to what power gives 64 as we can see that's 2 so that's going to be 2 and log base 8 of the square root of x plus 1 and I'm going to write the square root of x plus 1 as x plus 1 to the half so this becomes 2 minus half log base 8 of and watch carefully now I'm putting the x plus 1 in parentheses because the log applies to the whole parentheses not just to the x for number 28 we do log base b whatever is in the numerator gets a positive log so I'm going to be log base b of x cubed plus log base b of y but whatever is in the denominator gets a negative log minus log base b of z squared and then I move all exponents to the to become coefficients so I end up with 3 times the log base b of x plus log base b of y minus 2 times the log base b of z and I put a slash through my z so it doesn't get confused with a 2 then we have ln of square root of e to the x so I'm going to rewrite that as ln of e to the x to the half that half can go to the front so I have half ln of e times x and I'm going to just go all the way out and do it step by step here and then that what 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 that will do for us is we will then do half of ln of e plus ln of x and ln of e is 1 so that's just half times 1 which is half well let me just write it 1 plus ln of x and that will be half plus half ln x and I don't know if I'll have the space for uh, well what I will do is just I'll leave number 40 for you to try on your own and then we'll see if you will need the space here so the answer is half plus half ln x that simple looking one turned out to be quite involved so in this one, we have a similar approach. We have log base 10 of x over y, all of that raised to the power 1 half. So then you just move the exponent to the coefficient. So you end up with half log of x over y. Well, that's just half. log of x minus log of y in parentheses there and then you distribute the half we get half log x minus half log y step by step let's see what we have so Pull this down a little bit so we have a little bit more space to work with here we have log base b of this complicated expression but if you use your exponent rules and the steps that and go step by step it becomes relatively easy you do log of base b of the numerator is multiplied so i'm going to write the x as x to the one third the cube root is only for the x that's in the numerator the y to the fourth is also in the numerator so that's log base b of y to the four but the z is in the denominator, so I'm going to minus that log, log base b of z to the 5. And then I just move the exponents to the front. 1 third log base b of x plus 4 log base b of y minus 5 log base b 
of z. And that's that. Let's move on to number 36. With number 36, we do this whole exponent, this whole logarithm is um, the input is all raised to the power of uh, one fifth because it's a fifth root. So we have x, y to the fourth over 16 raised to the power one fifth. So let's move that one fifth to the front of the log. I'm going to combine two steps here. When I move that, I'm going to split up the logs at the same time. So I have log of x plus, oh sorry, log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y to the 4 minus log base 2 of 16. That gives me 1 fifth log base 2 of x plus 4 because the exponent becomes the coefficient log of log base 2 of y and then minus log base 2 of 16 is 4 just the number 4 so when you distribute the exponent you get 1 fifth log base 2 of x plus 4 fifths log base 2 of y minus 4 fifths and that's that and then finally we're going to do one of these two guys and let's see eeny meeny miny mo i think i'm going to do number 40 so i'm going to leave number 38 for your own efforts while i do number 40. So let's see if we can squeeze that one in to this little spot right here. So we first expand the logarithm and we're going to convert all ex all radicals into exponents as well. So we end up with log of 100 plus log of x cubed because that's in the exponent multiplied, in the numerator multiplied, plus log of 5 minus x to the 1 third. I rewrote the exponent as a, the radical as an exponent, minus log of 3, because that's multiplied in the denominator, minus log of x plus 7 squared. Also in the denominator, so its log is negative. Log of 100 is just 2, because 10 to the 2 is 100. We move the exponent to come the coefficient of plus 3 log x, and then plus 1, one third log of 5 minus x, minus log of 3, which we'll just leave as that, minus 2 log of x plus 7 and that's that that's our answer right there let's try a few more examples in this case we're now going to combine them we're going to condense the logarithm so for this one number 41 to 70 use the properties of logarithms to condense each logarithmic each logarithmic expression write the expression as a single logarithm whose coefficient is one that means there's, there should be no coefficient in front of the logarithm other than one and uh, where possible evalu evaluate the logarithm without using a calculator so for number 42 we simply since it's a log is the sum of two logs we're working the other way now so we multiply the inputs so we're going to multiply 250 by 4. Uh, well, 250 multiplied by 4 is 1,000. So log of 1,000. Well, log of 1,000 is just 3 because 10 to the 3 is 1,000. So that's the answer right there. Piece of cake. Let me write it right here. Then we have ln of x plus ln of 3. Just as before, we multiply the inputs. So we have x times 3 which I can write as ln of 3x. Put that in parentheses so that there's no confusion. 
Then we do log base 3 of 4 of 5 minus log base 3 of 5. Since it's a subtraction of two logs, then we divide the inputs with the same base. 4 of 5 divided by 5. Let's work that out. 4 of 5 divided by 5 is 81. So it's log base 3 of 81. 5 into 4 is 8. 5 into 5 is 1. Our log base 3 of 81 is 4 because 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Then we have this other simple one we just write the log and then just do the quotient 3x plus 7 over x please note that the x's don't cancel you can only cancel when everything is multiplied there's a plus here and this minus in front of the log is what causes me to put a uh, the input of that logarithm to the denominator all right let's try this next example here This one is pretty simple, but before we can combine the logs, we must first move the, the, the uh, coefficient to become the exponent. So we should then have log of x plus log of y to the seventh. And then I can combine the logs. You have to make sure there's no coefficient before we combine. And we must make sure that the, the uh, exponents, are, the bases are the same. So in this case, we have log base 10 of x times y to the 7. The 7 exponent is only for the y, not for the x. In this case, we're going to move the 1 third to become the exponent, and I will also convert that to a, a, a radical. So it's ln of x to the 1 third plus ln of y, and that is the same as ln of x to the 1 third y which I can write as ln of y cube root of x. We'll move both exponents to become coefficients, uh, both coefficients to become exponents in this example here, in this exercise. So we have log base b of x to the 5, plus log base b of y to the 6. And then since it's a sum of logs, I will just multiply the inputs, keep the same base. x to the 5, y to the 6. Log base b of x to the 5, y to the 6. For number 56, same as before, we just move the coefficients to become exponents of the inputs. And then we end up with ln of x to the 7, minus ln of y cubed. And that gives us ln of x to the 7 over y cubed. That's that. Let's continue here. This one is just like the one we did before. So I'm going to leave that for, for you to do. So for this next question here, I'm going to combine and move these exponents to the um, to be these coefficients to be exponents again of the natural logs of the input of the natural logs. So we end up with ln of x plus 9 to the 8 minus ln of x to the 4. And that will give us ln of the quantity x plus 9 to the 8 over x to the 4. And that's that. With this one, we write that as ln of x to the 4 plus ln of y to the 7 minus ln of z cubed. Putting those together, we get ln of x to the 4, y to the 7, divided by z cubed, because the z had a negative logarithm. So with this one, we first have to combine these two logs, and then we'll just do the uh, cube root of that, or the exponent. So we end up with one-third, one-third log base 4 of x over y. And that's just log base 4 of x over y to the one-third. 
which I will write as log base 4 of the cube root of x over y. And that's that. This one, similar. Since we just did that process right here, I'm just going to rewrite that as log log base 4 of cube root of x over y plus and this one is log base 4 of x plus 1 squared exponent comes the front so that becomes log base 4 of this is going to be a little bit tedious to write so we have quantity cube root of x times x plus 1 squared over the cube root of y. I just split up that cube root into two pieces so that it wasn't as uh, cumbersome, at least not from my perspective. The cube root is only for the x, not for the x plus 1 squared. And the x plus 1 squared is in the numerator because of the plus. Let's move on to the last two here. Um, I'm trying to decide which one I'll do. So let me go with number 70. You can do number 68. So for number 70, we have log x. And this here is curious because it can be expanded and I'm gonna expand this a bit and probably cancel some stuff here so we're gonna combine first so we have log of quantity x because that's a positive log x square minus 4 because that's a positive log over that's a negative log so I'm gonna put 15 here and that's a negative log so I'm gonna put x minus x plus 2 there and that's that now assuming that the x is satisfying the conditions we're going to factor so we have x times x plus 2 times x minus 2 that's a difference of squares over 15 times x plus 2 and what you'll see here is that the x plus 2 cancels assuming that the x satisfies a conditions of the uh, the conditions of the uh, of the domain so we have log now base 10 of x times x plus 2 x minus 2 sorry over 15 and all of that is inside the logarithm let's do one more set of examples so in this case in this case they tell us that log base b of 2 is a and log base b of 3 is c. Write each expression in terms of capital A, capital C. So this here, we need to get these expressions to be log base b of 2 or log base b of 3. And then we can replace log base b of 2 with a and log base b of 3 with c. So let's see what we got here. Log base b of 3 over 2 is equal to. So quotient, so it's the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator log base b of 3 is c so that's just c minus log base b of 2 is a that's just c minus a and we're done very simple this one is just as easy we just do we just recognize that 6 is actually 2 times 3 so we can then write this as log base b of 2 plus log base b of 3 and that will give us a plus c this one looks a little tricky but if you pay close attention see 8 is actually 2 times itself 3 times or 2 cubed you can then move that exponent to become the coefficient and that becomes 3 log base b of 
2 and log base b of 2 is a so that's just 3 a some people would even say log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 2 which is a plus itself three times which gives us the same result let's take a look at number 86 very similar to number 85 so I'd like you to try that and then check your answer with mine 81 is 3 to the power of 4. 3 to it times itself 4 times gives you 81. So we can then remove that 4 to the coefficient of the logarithm. So we have log base b of 3. Then log base b of 3 is c. So it's just 4c. This one looks a little tricky, but it's not quite as bad as it looks. We just rewrite the log, the exponent, the radical as, a, as an exponent. and move the exponent to the coefficient. While I'm doing that, I realize that 27 is 3 cubed. So I can then continue here and say, well, this is half times the quantity log base b of 2 minus log base b of 3 cubed see how much of this we can get through here that's half times the quantity log base b of 2 minus the 3 becomes a coefficient 3 log base b of 3 so that gives me half times the quantity a minus 3 c so that answer is half a minus 3 3 halves C. You can do this one in a similar way. Log base B of 3 over, and 16 is 2 to the 4, so I'll write as 2 to the 4. That raised to the power 1 half. I move the 1 half to the coefficient, so I get 1 half log base B of 3 over 2 to the 4. That gives us half log base b of 3 minus, well, let's put that in brackets, log base b of 2 to the 4. That gives us half of log base b of 3 minus 4. 4 log base b of 2. That gives us half of c minus 4a. When you distribute that half, you get half c minus 2a. So, of course, those are good practice questions for you to try. And we now come to the last few concepts here and uh, this last one is about what if you want to find the log of a number that is not an easy base for example some calculators only have two bases base 10 and base e base 10 is just written as a log base e is written as a base as, a, as, as ln now and what if you want to find something like log base 5 of 28 log base 5 of 25 is easy but log base 5 of 28 is not easy how do we find those we use what we call the change of base formula, and we're going to illustrate that right now. So we know that log base 2 of 8 is 3, and log base 2 of 16 is 4. So what if we want to find log base 2 of 10? We know that the answer should be between 3 and 4, because 2 to the 3 is 8, and 2 to the 4 is 16. Probably even closer to 3 than to 4. But what exactly is it? Well, let's do this. Let's say we rewrite log base 2 of 10 as x so log base 2 of 10 is x then using the rule the definition of logarithms i can rewrite this logarithm as base 2 raised to the power x is 10 and we, so we change it there that doesn't help us much because 2 to the what power gives us 10 not easy to tell but we just found out a property that if we take the log of both sides say log base 10 then 
I can simply move that x in the exponent to become the coefficient of the log. And th then I'll have just have log base 10 of 10 over log base. Uh, and then that part is easy to work out. And this part we can work out on the calculator. We'll just solve for x. So x is just log base 10 of 10 over log base 10 of 2, which works out to be 3.32. Just do log 10 on, on the calculator and then divide that by log 2. And there you have it. Now, if, as you notice here, it's an approximation, so it's not going to give us an exact value because we rounded, but it's a um, good process. And it doesn't matter what log I use. I could have used ln here or any other logarithm. So that's called the change of base formula. It says if I have log base A of M, I can change this to a new base and just arbitrarily choose a base. Arbitrarily, that means I choose which base I want and just do log base B which is my new base, of the argument over log base b of the original base. So you can use that to, you, to find the log of any base using either the common log base 10, so I can say log base a of m is log m over log a, or I can use a natural log instead, which I could write as ln m over ln a, just make sure I'm using the same log each time. So let's try a few examples here, and, and here's a little quick summary of what we just said. This is the change of base property. You can arbitrarily choose any new base you want. That new base could be either base 10 or base E or any base. If you're using base 10, we just do log. If you're doing base E, we use LN. So those are our favorites to use. So let's illustrate that with this quick example. Log base 3 of 16. I can simply just say, oh, well, there's no log base 3 on my calculator. Some calculators do, but most of them don't. But I can always say, oh, well, let's just do log base uh, ln of 16 over ln of 3. Now, I know my answer is supposed to be somewhere between 2 and 3 because log base 3 of 9 is 2 and log base 3 of 27 is 3. So my answer should be something between 2 and 3. So I just choose ln and do ln of 16 over ln of 3, ln of input over ln of base. Work it out on the calculator, and bam, 2.524 approximately. And there you got it. I could have also used log base 10, and just do log 16 over log 3. And you can check, and it will give you the same result. So that's pretty easy. Uh, it's an easy process. So uh, I'll leave you to do that, and uh, just... Just I'm just going to identify a couple of new of last properties of logarithms which we will need to solve logarithmic and exponential equations, which will be another lesson. This this is the one-to-one -one property. This part here is the function property. If you put in the same number, you should get the same output. This is the one-to-one -one property. If you get the same output, it's the same number you plug in. The one-to-one -one property says same input, uh, same output means same input. Okay. So as, the, as long as the bases are the same, the output, the inputs will be the same. So let's say we try this quick, ex, these quick examples, and then, and then we can uh, close off the lesson. So very simply, we have two ba logs here: log base six of three x minus seven equal to log base six of seventeen. Since the bases are the same, we have the same base. And there's no coefficient, it's just log equal to log, then the rule says the arguments must be equal. So the inputs must be the same. And then I can just solve this, add 7 to both sides, and divide by 3. So x is equal to 8. Very simple. Over here, we have coefficients in front of the logs. Uh, what I could do is use the properties of logarithms to move the coefficients to become exponents. So I end up with log base 9 of x cubed is equal to log of base 9 of 8 squared. So now that I have the same base and nothing in front, same base, I can then say, oh, that means the inputs are the same x to the a, 3 is equal to 8 squared. 8 squared is 64. So x to the 3 is 64. So out of the cube root of 64, I get 4. 
and that's my answer right there very simple we're going to do more detailed uh, a more detailed treatment of of the uh, the solving logarithmic equations in another lesson but for at this point that's all for now with this lesson again as usual I recommend that you check out Khan Academy for practice exercises and additional videos that are in smaller bites smaller videos with examples and of course practice and of course also check out openstax.org o-p-e-n-s-t-a-x.org for free online textbooks in particular college algebra textbooks with practice and there's also an android app for that that's all for now all the best keep practicing and succeed